By the end of this video, you're going to easily be able to solve any system of equations using the substitution method. And in about 30 seconds, here's how this video is going to help you do that. We're going to start off by solving this system of equations using the substitution method, and I'm going to give you the three-step process that you need in order to do that. After that, we're going to go through some more problems, and these problems are just going to get harder and harder as we go, so make sure you're watching till the end of the video. And after all that, I'm going to give you a problem to try and answer in the comments. And as always, if you're looking for the notes for this video, and when I say that, I mean printable notes that have a QR code attached that will take you back to the video. Those are the kinds of notes I'm talking about, and if you're looking for those, I'm gonna have a link to that right in the description down below. Also in the description, I have another video where we go through and solve 10 more systems of equations. So if you're interested in doing more practice because you have a test coming up or something like that, or you just want more practice in general, definitely check out that video in the description. So we're gonna start off with this system of equations right here. We wanna solve this and we wanna solve it using substitution method. Now here are the three steps that you need in order to solve a system of equations with the substitution method. The first step is going to be to solve for x or y in one of these two equations. So let's see, we wanna get x or y by itself in one of the equations and hey look, y is already by itself in the first equation. So that's actually step one already done. It's already been done for us. So we move on to step two. And step two says to plug that into the other equation and solve. So what does that mean? Well, if we know that y is equal to 6x minus 11, that means that these two things are exactly the same. And so what that means is that if I take this other equation right here and I start writing it out, negative 2x minus 3 times y, y, we just said, is the same exact thing as 6x minus 11. We know that because they're equal. So what I can do here is plug in a 6x minus 11 for x. And then I just continue this equation. It says equals negative 7. Now the advantage to doing that is, well, that now we don't have any more y's. Before we couldn't solve and get y or x equal to a number, but now since all the y's are eliminated, we just have x's left and we can. And you're gonna see that right now. So what we're gonna to need to do is distribute through this negative three here. If we distribute that negative three to the six x, we're gonna get negative 18 x. That's negative three times six. Then we distribute that negative three to the negative 11. Negative three times negative 11 is a positive 33. And that's gonna be equal to negative seven. Okay, so now there's a few things we can do. We can combine like terms here to get negative 20 X. And also we have the 33 on this side. So that doesn't have an X on it. We wanna get that to the other side. We can do that by subtracting 33 on both sides. So we're kind of killing two birds with one stone here. That's something I like to do when I solve this. Hopefully it's not overwhelming for you. So again, combine like terms here, negative two X minus 18 X is gonna be a negative 20 X. And then on the other side, you're gonna get negative seven minus 33, which is a negative 40. And now dividing by negative 20 on both sides, we're going to be able to completely solve for X and negative 40 divided by negative 20 is just gonna be two. So we get X is equal to two. Great, that's one of our variables already solved for. And that completes step two. That's a horrible looking check mark. Let's do that again, there we go. So that moves, on, that moves us on to step three, which says to plug that answer, the x equals two, into our substitution and solve for the other variable. What's our substitution? Our substitution is the equation that we used to substitute. So here we used this equation right here to substitute six x minus 11 for y. We did that down here. So that's what we wanna plug into. And that's gonna allow us to solve for our other variable. Now, the reason why I say to plug into our substitution and not the other equation is because this equation is already solved for y, which is now what we want. We want to know the value of y. So that's why plugging into our substitution is so convenient. So here we go. Y is equal to six X minus 11. That's the substitution that we used. So now we can plug in that X is equal to two and solve from there. So X, instead of X, we're gonna have a two here. That gives us six times two minus 11. Six times two is 12. Minus 11 is gonna give us a one. And right there, we have our X, our Y, this problem is done. So writing our solution as a point, as a coordinate, as X comma Y, our X is two, 
and our y is 1. So the point here that we get as our answer is 2 comma 1. So we're going to do plenty more of these examples here, but first, what are we actually finding? Like what is 2 comma 1? What does that point represent here? Because it seems like we're just doing some random stuff. Well, let's talk about that. So I can explain that quickly in just like 30 seconds here. So picture your xy plane here. I'll draw it out. So here is your xy axes. And what these two things are is their lines. This you can see is already in y equals mx plus b4. Right? It's just going to be some line. I'm not going to draw the exact line here, but let's say it was something like this. And this other thing here, it might be hard to see how it's a line. This is just another form that you'll commonly see lines written in with the x and the y on one side and the number without an x or y on the other side. But if you solve for y here, you can get that into y equals mx plus b form as well. And you can try that on your own if you like, but just trust me, it will go into y equals mx plus b form. So this is also a line. And so if I graph that line, I'm not going to graph the exact line, but maybe it looks something like that. When you solve a system of equations, what you are finding is where these two lines intersect. And so here I, I drew the intersection about where it should be. Let's say this is two over and one up. Here we found that intersection is at two comma one. That is what you're finding when you solve a system of equations. You're finding where those two lines intersect. So hopefully that helps you understand what we're actually doing here. Moving on to our next problem here. Now this one is going to require a little bit more work because we're actually going to have to do step one this time. Before, we already had that y solved for. But now we actually need to solve for either x or y in one of these two equations. Now, you can do that in you know, the first equation. You can do that in the second equation. You can solve for x or y. But there is a little bit of strategy to this. Because if you notice here, this y is already all by itself. There's no number on it. It's not like a 2y or a 3y. It's just y. And so what I want to do, what I would do is just solve for y right away because all you would need to do to solve for y in the top equation is add 5x on both sides. So let's do that. If you take negative 5x plus y equals negative 2 and you add 5x on both sides, you already solve for y. And that's just less work for you to have to do. So we get that y is equal to a 5x minus 2. Now that is step one completed. We've solved for x or y, we solved for y in one of the equations. And now we move on to step two, which is plug into the other equation and solve. So this tells us here that y is the same thing as 5x minus two. And so we can take this other equation here, the second one, negative three x plus six times y, we can just say that y is 5x minus two because they're the same thing. So you see here, I just rewrote the second equation, but I plugged in a 5x minus 2 for y. That's all I did. So now we just need to solve for x. Let's go through and do that. We get negative 3x. The 6 needs to get distributed through. So 6 times 5x is going to be a 30x. 6 times negative 2 is going to be a negative 12. And then on the other side, we have a negative 12. So as you can see here with these negative 12s lining up, we're going to actually get them to cancel because we can add 12 on both sides to get all of our non x pieces to the right hand side. And what that's going to do is give us a zero on the right hand side. Then, I mean, we can just combine like terms here, negative three X plus 30 X. That's going to be a 27 X. And you might be able to see this already, or if you want, you can divide by 27 on both sides, but we get that x is equal to zero. And that is step two done. So now we just have to do step three. We gotta plug in that answer. We have to plug in the fact that we just found x is equal to zero into our substitution and solve for the other variable. Our substitution is right here. And we can plug into that. It's the exact same thing as plugging into our top equation because this and this are the exact same equation. And I know that because all we did here is we added the same thing on both sides. If you do the same thing to both sides of an equation, you're not changing anything. It's still the same equation. It's just in a different form. You know how we can write, like you might've done this by now where you can write lines in different forms. So there's like slope intercept and point slope. They're the same equation. They're just in different forms. So yeah, this is 
the equation I want to plug into. It's already solved for y, so it's really convenient. So if I plug in to y is equal to 5x minus 2, which is what that equation was, plug in that x is equal to 0, which is what we found here, I get that y is equal to negative 2. And now I have my x, I have my y, and I can write down what my solution is, where these two lines intersect. My point, x comma y, can be written as 0 comma negative 2. And there we go. So moving on to our third problem here, we actually have four to do, but this one is very, very quick. And the reason why I wanted to even bring this up in the first place is because people get confused when they see something like y equals negative two. They don't see any x's in that bottom equation, and that freaks them out a little bit. And it definitely freaked me out when I was in Algebra 1. I was like, well, what do I even do with that? So here's what you do. Let's still follow our step-by-step -step process. We're gonna stay true to it. And you'll see how the fact that we don't have any x's here actually is really nice. So step one is to solve for x or y in one of the equations. That's done. Y is solved for right here. And not only is it solved for, but we already have it as a solution. Remember like before, actually in here, y was equal to negative two. We want to get x or y equal to a number. That's our goal. And in this third problem here, it already gives us one of the solutions. It gives us that y is equal to negative two. So now we just need to find what x is equal to. So that, that's basically the second step already done for us because we already have one variable solved for, you know? So the only other thing we need to do is plug that answer in to the other equation. We write four x minus three times y, which we know y is negative two. That's what this equation says. And that's equal to 18. So let's just solve here for x. We have a negative three times negative two. That's a positive six. So this will be a plus six. And from there, let's subtract six on both sides. Get four x is equal to 12 and divide by four on both sides to get that x is equal to three. So right there, we get x is equal to three, y is equal to negative two. That's our answer. The x, y coordinate pair where they intersect is three comma negative two. So if you see a problem like that, don't get scared. It's actually a lot easier than you might think. A problem that's not much easier than you might think, uh, this problem can get a little bit gross because now we're gonna have to do a little bit more work to solve our substitution or to, to get our substitution. And this problem, if you look to do step one, you wanna solve for X or Y in one of the equations, now it's not as easy as it was in the second example where we saw that Y was almost already by itself. So we just wanted to solve for that. In this one, they all have numbers in front of them. And so what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're going to just, I would pick for the lowest number. That's what I would do. And actually I'm gonna do that in the bottom equation because it has smaller numbers. I don't wanna deal with a four. I'd rather deal with a three, a two and a one. So what I'm gonna do here is solve for y in the bottom equation. And I can do that. I'll just take the three x minus two y equals one. I'll put it over here. I'll start by subtracting three x on both sides to start getting that y by itself. So I get negative two y is equal to, uh, you can write this as one minus three x. There's nothing wrong with it. I always like seeing things more in like y equals mx plus b form. So I like to write it as negative three x plus one. And this and one minus three X are the same thing. That's just the commutative property. So I'm gonna write it as negative three X plus one. Now we just need to divide by negative two on both sides. And if we wanna divide this entire thing by negative two, it's the same thing as dividing each piece by negative two. So this is gonna become Y equal to, we have two negatives here and a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So this is gonna be a three halves X or you could write that as three X over two. It's the same thing. And then this is a negative one half. So that's step one done. We've solved for X or Y in one of the equations. We solved for Y in the bottom equation. Now we need to plug that into the other equation and solve. That's step two. So plugging into the top equation, which is the other one, 
we know that y is the same thing as 3 halves x minus 1 half. So when we start writing this equation, we get to the y part, we get minus 4 times y, we can replace that with a 3 halves x minus 1 half. And that's equal to 2. Now, we just distribute through. So we distribute through that negative 4. Negative 4 times 3 halves, well, that 4 is going to become a 2. This will become a 1. So we get negative 2 times a 3, which is negative 6. And there's an x there, so it's negative 6x. So that is the first one done. And now I'll reset that so we can distribute through the second time. We have negative 4 times negative 1 half, which that'll be a positive number because there's two negatives. And that'll just be 2, right? Because 4 divided by 2 is 2. And that's equal to 2. So now I'm going to subtract 2 on both sides to get all my non-x pieces to the other side. And I can combine like terms over on the left-hand side. So over on the left side, I have negative 3x minus 6x, which is a negative 9x. And then I have a 2 minus 2 on the right-hand side, which is a 0. And as you can see here, we're going to get that x is equal to 0. So that's my first variable solve for. That's step 2. Step 3 says to plug that answer into the substitution and solve for the other variable. This is my substitution. That's what I'm plugging in for. So again, that substitution is y is equal to 3 halves x minus 1 half. And if I plug in that x is equal to 0, then what I'm going to get is that y is equal to, this is entire, that, that entire thing is 0, so it's just negative 1 half. So I take this, I take this, and those are my answers. So the point of intersection, the xy pair, is going to be 0, comma, negative 1 half. And that is the answer for the last problem that we're going to do together in this video. And that's how to solve systems of equations using the substitution method. And assuming that you feel pretty good with that, here is a problem for you to try and answer in the comments. So I have another system of equations right here. Just follow this step-by-step -step process like we've been doing in the four problems that we did in this video. And let me know what your answer is in the comments. And if you had any questions on anything we talked about in this video, again, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to you when I can. Now, again, I have an extra video where we go through 10 more of the systems of equations problems right in the description. We're gonna talk about substitution method, elimination method. We'll go through where we have one solution, no solutions, infinite solutions. We're gonna go through all of that stuff. And so that is right in that extra video in the description. Lastly, make sure that you're subscribed to this YouTube channel. Look. I've been recording a lot of videos today. I've been recording a lot of videos for the past few days for you guys. And so my throat is starting to hurt because I'm talking for literally hours at a time. So what I need you guys to do is subscribe because if I wasn't poor right now, I'd be able to afford ice cream to like, you know, help my throat a little bit. So that's what I need you guys to do. Help me not be poor so I can not hurt. Okay, with that being said, that's gonna do it for this video and I'll see you guys soon.